if you want to hit another level, if you want to go to another stage, you, you can't do it by yourself. You know, you have to do it with people around you. And so for me in, in, in my role here in operations and what I do with Pivot, I understand that I have to work with people in a way that really for me is pushing them to what they haven't seen before, right? So it's kind of what's in your hand. It's just something that I live. It's just something that I live. Hey, hey, hey. It's just something that I live that this world don't live. It's just something that I feel that this world don't feel. I gotta keep it real. Welcome to the Let Bob Podcast. It's your boy Ant. We got a fresh episode today that's kind of sensitive to me. This is one of our clients from our Bob and Co. agency. Uh, he's representing one of our clients, I should say, uh, Kingdom Fellowship, a good buddy of mine that was just with us in New York uh, last week, uh, Pastor Watley. Uh, so it's exciting to have uh, you on and uh, have someone from his his team uh, come on and talk with us today, Mr. Russell St. Bernard. So talk to us about what you've done at Kingdom Fellowship. Apparently you've uh, innovated something very special uh, at the at the church, and we'd like to hear about it, and then tell us a little bit about yourself. Cool, cool. Thanks for having me on, uh, Brother Anthony. Anthony, um, I am uh, Russell St. Bernard. I go by Rev Russ. The guy you were talking about is my guy. Uh, it's my senior pastor, Pastor Matthew Wiley. Uh, big shout out, Kingdom Fellowship. Uh, and I serve here as the minister, director of ministry operations. Um, so if we were in the corporate world, I would just be over all operations. Um, because we're in a church, I'm over ministry operations, but pretty much everything you see online, everything you see on Sunday morning, all of the ministries that lead up to it, all of the graphics that lead up to it, all of those teams um, I work with, I have the pleasure of serving and leading uh, throughout the week. Um, and uh, I, But I've been with Pastor Watley now for 14 years, and so uh, the church, uh, Kingdom Fellowship is officially four years old. Um, but Pastor Wiley started this work as a part of a church called Reed Temple AME. He was the okay. North Campus guy. And that was about 17, 18 years ago. So oh, wow. when I came on board, they were about four years uh, old already. Uh, they were in a high school getting ready to move into a building that we were going to lease, but we had to sit out. And he wanted a youth guy to come in and really, and that, that, that has been my past history doing youth ministry. I have books on it and other things around that. Um, so I've been pleasured to start the ministry with Doc um, after the four year mark. He started it. He and Lady Shine, a big shout out, my first lady. Uh, <laughs> but they uh, they uh, uh, started it. And then I came uh, again with him about 14 years ago and been able to really run pieces uh, with him. So all of the areas report up to me because we joke all the time. There's not a ministry in the church that he hasn't done. And there's not a thing that I haven't done. So uh, they report up because we, before we had the team, it was just us. <laughs> um, yeah. That's good stuff. Uh, interesting fact about uh, Pastor Wilder. He was one of our first guests. We nice. Podcast, man. Like, I came into the podcast industry green, man. I'd never done this before. Um, so he was one of the, he was actually our second guest, uh, right. which was, you know, kind of cool uh, because the aspect he came from was really different. Uh, rarely do you see a pastor that business oriented, right? And he, yeah. he had some perspectives that was pretty powerful. So, I'm yeah. sure it's a pleasure to run alongside him um, at uh, Kingdom Fellowship. But more about uh, more about you. I'm sorry. Um, so you you were telling me something about a something called a pivot that you started. Yeah. So so I I run operations here, but I also am a entrepreneur on the side. So I have, um, like I said, I came here to be the youth guy. So I have a company called After the Music Stops LLC. The whole purpose of that was. Uh, God had blessed me at, at the, when I started that company years ago now to really do well in youth ministry. Um, I'm one of the youth ministry experts nationwide for a company called Outreach Magazine. Um, I'm also one of the ministry experts for uh, uh, Givelify and a couple other life, uh, uh, new version on the Bible. I've been on their thing. Um, but I used to do youth ministry for a while. And so I got books out on it, curriculum out on it. And I came here with that. And that's how I did the youth stuff. And then I've, you know, transitioned into doing all ministries. But um, I also have what's called a ministry pivot. So during COVID, I was uh, pushed to start a ministry pivot, which is 
uh, a ministry that helps people think differently. Really, my tagline with Ministry Pivot is this is your season of opportunity. All you have to do is pivot toward it. Um, because what happened so much from my perspective inside COVID and really after COVID is people look at their uh, options as limited. And the truth is your options are unlimited. Your options are choice, but your opportunities are limited. Um, and so that's really where it comes from. And, and it's biblical. It comes from uh, the scripture uh, in Exodus where God is talking to Moses and Moses is, is telling Moses all that he has to do to free the people uh, from uh, slavery. And he says to them, how can I do it? And God says, what's in your hand? Right. And I think that there's so many of us that discount what we can do um, because we don't realize we don't understand what God has put in our hand. And so ministry pivot is to help people understand what that is, to help people understand what that looks like, to help people understand uh, what the true value is in that way. Now, that's cool, because that's, that's interesting. You get to to kind of leverage what you need to run operations. Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah, I do. All the way through. All the way through. All the way through. People coming to you for, you know, answers uh, and probably coming to you, you know, with with challenges uh, mm -hmm. from possibly that they feel they can't you know, manage on their own. Um, yeah. So you're able to, you know, leverage um, your pivot concept um, on a daily basis, which probably makes uh, your ministry really strong uh, yeah. because you not only can give the advice, you can see the manifestation of it as it, you know, as your advice happens within others. Um, yeah. So that, that means that like you work heavily with people, right? And I think okay. in my journey, um, um, and what I've done in my life, that's a, that could be really challenging, right? Um, mm -hmm. you're dealing with just so many different personalities and so many different perspectives. Yeah. You know, if you think about your your pivot ministry concept, like what's some of some advice or some of the learnings or challenges you've had? You know, trying to juggle personalities and perspectives on the daily. Yeah, I think the biggest thing, to be quite honest, is um, all of us are in people business, whether we like it or don't like it right so i'm gonna say a statement and anybody that sees this that knows rep rust know that rep rust means this from his heart um it's tough to be around everybody all the time hmm. right but understanding that even though it's tough to be around everybody all the time we can't do things by ourselves right yes. the majority of what you can do by yourself is at a certain level but when you want to have maximum impact, even even the sports, right, even the sports that are supposed to be like single player sports like golf, it's not really a single player sport. Right. There's a coach, there's a team, there's practice, there's all of those things. Right. We can see it in basketball and football and other mainly team team sports. But the truth is, if you want to hit another level, if you want to go to another stage, you, you can't do it by yourself. You know, you have to do it with people around you. And so. For me, in, in, in my role here in operations and what I do with Pivot, I understand that I have to work with people in a way that really, for me, is pushing them to what they haven't seen before, right? So it's kind of what's in your hand. And doing that, excuse me, from the aspect of ministry, sometimes it's tough because people, unfortunately, have been trained to think that there's a limit to their life, right? That there's a limit to what they can produce, what God is gonna allow them to have. And the truth is those limits don't exist, um, but we just have to dial it in a different way. Um, so so yeah, I, I have the opportunity to train and to lead several people and even now to coach uh, several people. One of the things that I did more super recently um, was I, I became a, a Gallup Clifton Strength Finder certified coach. And so that, um, has helped me because it helps. One of the things about coaching and strengths coaching is you help people focus on their strengths and not what we call your lesser strengths, right? What yeah. we call the things that you aren't 100% great in, but you focus on what you are great in and then you staff the other parts you are not great in, right? If you if you work at a church, if you work at a, a business and you got a team, then you manage the weaknesses, right? You manage the lesser parts. But if you don't have a team, if you're a sole, you know, entrepreneur by yourself, then you staff the other parts. But the truth is all of us have the opportunity every single day uh, to achieve another level of success. The tension is honestly, oftentimes we cap ourselves. Um, and so with me, I I'm able to kind of help encourage our team and our people uh, to move forward and to do more than they've seen done. No, that's good. That's good stuff. Um, I think we see it often. Uh, the opinion is that someone got somewhere by themselves. Yeah. Or you might have some individuals who think 
you know, that they can do it by themselves, right? And so that's a common theme, you yeah. know, in the community. Um, I've, I've had the pleasure of mentoring or speaking to young athletes uh, several times. Mm-hmm. Um, I have had the uh, pleasure to speak with, you know, athletes that were high school, but really college and sometimes professionally, professionally bound. Yeah. But the thought of that is just them, right? Thinking that they it, right? Yeah. Not the coach or the mom or the dad yeah. or the family who's supporting you and trying to guide you. Um, they just don't get that you can't do anything by yourself. Yeah, I'm a firm believer in my teaching that you know everybody needs somebody. Yeah, in fact, everything needs something. You know, nothing can operate alone. God just didn't create it to work like that. And the cool part is when you understand that principle, and like you really get that, that's when you start having a higher probability, probability and success with stuff you do. Yeah, when you stop trying to do it by yourself, and so yeah. it's kind of cool to hear your your slice of that same level of knowledge um, that you know you can't do it by yourself, and you need you need help. Yeah. Uh, I like people, and that's why I really like uh, Pastor Wiley. Just you know, spending time with him this past week, just hearing how he thinks and watching how he moves. You know, from the outside looking in, yeah. but he's a t- he's a collaboratory thinker. Yeah, right. Uh, to your point, golf is always the fail safe. Well, golfers, you know, they that's an individual sport, but it's not. Nope. It's not. You just can't speak of people who help them, right? Yeah, exactly. I, I never thought about that. Like, because I hear people say that all the time because I'm a fan of team. I play basketball. Yeah. So I know, like, I'm the point guard at the time. You know, you had the five dedicated positions. It's, it's kind of positionless ball now, but at the time, <laughs> I knew my role as a point guard, you know, and yeah. I, I sent them a power forward, my shooting guards, and yeah. We know if we need a three, we're gonna go to wheel over here. We know if we, you know, need to get the ball up the court, give it to me, you know. And so I think when you have that experience, kind of helps you. Uh, and I, I'll say it like this because I, I said this um, amongst some some uh, football players this past week. Being an athlete and being a team in a team sport, it trains you be to be a crazy businessman. Like mm-hmm. you can really dominate as a businessman because the uh, characteristics of team um, is what you need to perform in this world, right? Um, to your point, you know, you've been with Pastor Wiley when y'all were a small team. Yeah. But with those pr- principles, you were leveraging a small team, you just magnify them as you grow and you having a tremendous amount of success as, as you're doing that, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's kind of yeah. cool stuff. So, um as you as a you said on the side, so I'm gonna get you for that because just because it's something that you're not doing full time, we ain't gonna say it's on the side. You a black on <laughs> hey, look, yeah. I don't be value your business like that. No, you're a black on business, it ain't yeah. what you on the side, it's a, it's something in addition to what you do with the church, right? So I'm gonna put that yes. kind of respect on it. But what's your like vision for that? Are you gonna continue to grow it or like it's just something that you're doing just out of passion like what's your thought well i think so let me let me let me jump back on the other side to the the team piece the team piece is important because you also need coaches right everybody needs coach i always say all the time my wife um been married uh shout out uh, my wife erica we've been married 18 years i I always say she's she's a marriage family therapist i always say you need you need and therapists are coaches right i think you need a pastor you need a therapist you need a coach Right. And and a lot of those sports, even like you you play ball. Right. Like so even though it was five of y'all on the court and it was a head coach. Right. You had a strength coach. You had a weight coach. You had a conditioning coach. Right. You had a food coach. Right. You had. And then and then that's just the coaches for the team. Right. The players that we see on the court that we appreciate so much. They got the player coaches, the team coaches. Then they got like a separate coach like they go with them on the off season. Right. So a lot of what happens and I'm saying it because a lot of what happens like the golf on the field is really the byproduct of what happened when the cameras weren't around. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's really a byproduct. Of what, and, and, and the tension, I think, comes a lot of the times when we want what we see on camera, but we don't want what we see when the lights are off. Right. We want what we see when everybody's taking the picture and the poster. But we don't want the weights, right? We don't want the the times that you had to go to the doctor because you dislocated something because you're trying to hit that last. Like, we don't want them reps, right? But them reps make that shot, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Them reps uh, make that goal. And so I think that's 
a, a key piece that I think we all need need need, need to get. So I had to get that part out. But okay. let me let me let me say um, with pivot. So and, and and I say aside because I appreciate what the church does for me. Uh, but the church doesn't fool with pivot, right? Pivot is what Russell has done to kind of develop what he's doing. But I I want to develop pivot in the space of leadership development and practical development for people that look like me. Yeah. Right. So I appreciate all of the podcasts out there. I appreciate all of the books out there, but I believe that your background, your history and your experience also add value. And a lot of the podcasts and stuff that are out that I listen to, and I'm not going to name any, but I listen to the, the hosts don't look like me. Right. They don't. And it's, and it's not that what they're saying is wrong. It's that what I say, bring a little bit of different, what I say brings a different hue to it. Right. And I think that's that's the focus. So for me, uh, Ministry Pivot, I, long term, I'd love to see it, uh, uh, to, to see it syndicated. Ministry Pivot, we're going to start actually this year with Pivot University. So I'm going to start doing some training and some coaching directly around helping people pivot. Um, there's some other products that I'm going to start releasing uh, that will also help from books to uh, seminars to small group pieces that I'm going to help to tie in with pivot but then also like I spoke about uh, a minute ago I'm now a certified strengths coach and so being able to help people identify their strengths and lean into those strengths which may cause them to pivot away from certain things or even pivot towards certain things so for me um, I, I see ministry pivot as the starting point uh, of, of one of the opportunities that I think God has given me uniquely built me uh, to be able to help people uh, to see their greater their greater and greatest potential if that makes sense. No, no, that's good. That's 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 good and necessary. Like we 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 strongly believe that like you learn better when you're looking at somebody who looked like you. Yeah. Like it's just it creates a different, you know, flavor of attention, uh, a different level of belief. Um, you can get information from anybody, but the person who looked like you can kind of understand kind of mm -hmm. going through a little bit better and can, yeah. can put the message in a way that kind of resonate with you uh, much better. So I like the fact that you are, you know, focusing on, Hey, look, I did it this way, but I didn't see a lot of people look like me doing it. And I got a flavor that I know people like me can benefit yeah. from. Like that's the same thing we're doing with Bob from a yeah. technology side and a finance side, you know, on my journey, you know, I rarely got to, you know, code with people who look like me or in finance, you rarely, you know, run it across people who have the level of finance, um, edu financial education that we have on yeah. our team. And so it's cool now to wear the T-shirts and wear the hat. So it's like, OK, when we're talking to the audience that look like us, it's like, oh, OK, I can do that. Oh, yeah. that's what I should look into. Oh, that's cool. You know, something something and not to keep referring back to this this past week, but it was kind of a, a two mix. We had our summit and then we had um, Michael B. Jordan does a legacy classic for HBCUs. Okay. Uh, he's partnering with one of our partners, which is Invesco. Uh, we're doing some stuff with and um, the students that were there. I was noticing I had a blazer on. So I usually uh, bring it all the way down. So I'll come okay. out and just always have T-shirts and a baseball cap most times when I'm talking to a younger audience. Yeah. And that time I was, because I was on a panel, I was like, okay, I'm going to keep my, my blazer on. And after the panel was over, we met with the students. And one of the one of the students walked up to me, and she was like, you look like you invest in the stock market. <laughs> a blazer. And I was like, wow, like, I really, I appreciated her, her, her comment, but yeah. it was like, man, like, even the blazer, represent a level of intimidation to an, to uh, to our our audience right our community yeah. and yeah. so we got to just change that narrative we got to continue to kind of uh put more people who look like us in finance more people who look like us teaching proper leadership and strength yeah. you are and more people uh teaching technology that looks like us so we can change the narrative right and yeah. so I'm always excited to talk to a leader in a in an industry that's commonly not heard about or a leader who's cutting it cutting the um the fruit a different way so that we can attract you know people who look like us so we can make you know make a, a dent in this narrative that's out there um, yeah 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 i totally agree and i think i think that the key is enough of us jumping out and 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 knowing that we can do it 
yeah. and knowing that um, even before we started, we can do it. You know what I mean? And I think that's that that's one of the things that often, you know, because I haven't seen it doesn't mean, you know, I've I've gotten I got at six books written. I've helped um, probably the last time I stopped counting 24, 25 authors write their book and get it from start to finish, because it's not like it can't happen, even though you haven't seen it happen. It yeah. can happen. And so I think that what you're saying is totally key. And we have to know, right, the we that's you and I and the we that's those watching and listening, um, that it is it's possible and it may just start with us, right? Yeah. But it doesn't end with us. Yeah. No, I like that. And, and I, I, I like to be an example of my philosophy, what I push, you know what I mean? So when I don't know something, I don't mind saying I don't know, right? I have yeah. some, some books that I need to get done, right? So I'm going to... Hey, while we're streaming, I'm going to ask you, what do I need to do to get with you to get my books? Easy. <laughs> yeah. right? I got the content, but like, how do I push it farther? Right. It's something I haven't journeyed off into uh, just yet. But hey, here's an opportunity for I me. Mean, I'm a man who try to take advantage of opportunities. So I'd love to get with you and see like what, what's necessary to, you know, get your services or whatever to, yeah, uh, yeah. to get on that journey. Yeah, no, that's easy. That's all. We, we, we can do that easily. Um, I got a team that helps me do. So other thing is, is to create, right? So like, even the shirt I'm wearing now says we are not the same. We are not the same. It's, it's, it's a brand called Riot Starter. So like, at, so let's just, again, I'm, I'm a, I'm, I'm a creator, right? And I think everybody's a creator. Yeah. Um, but at the church, right, we started a brand, uh, again, big shout out to King Fellowship, Pastor Wiley. We started a brand uh, called Kingdom Apparel, right? And we just started it, like just, and now, you know, we, we have, we're blessed to have several thousand people come uh, to the church on Sundays. And it's, it's wild to see people wearing the shirts. It's wild to see people that I know when I, when I travel, that's in LA and others wearing the shirts. We got people who are in Africa wearing the shirts, like wearing, and it's not just the regular church shirt, but like even the shirt I got on now, again, it's a young man that I know, uh, big shout out, Pastor Gerard, he, he's in Memphis. He started this thing called Riot Starter. I helped him with his book. Um, and the whole thought is that we're not the same. Like we're, we're, we're in this world. We're not of this world. We're supposed to stand out, supposed to be a light, supposed to be what God has called us to be. But when you create, it doesn't have to be corny. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to be a whack thing. It can be something that's super dope. And so I, I rep it. And so you should rep yours. Like we should all do it in a way that, that identifies the uniqueness that God created us to be. You know what I mean? And so I think that that's super dope. Nah, as you see, I, I got mine on. I keep keep some Bob something on, right? Yeah, I, yeah. Like, I'm, I'm a big fan of that. Uh, just because I'm, I've never been really heavily into like designer clothes or anything. And mm -hmm. so when I learned I could, you know, basically create my own jeans, and my own, you know, have my own suits tailored and things of that nature. Like yeah. I embrace that. I'll spend for my name, you know, yeah. my company, my dream, and, and God's yeah. work for me. And so I try to encourage others. Uh, I actually have on one of my partners. Um, this is his company, Desjardins Capital. Um, okay. I, I try to just rep brands of either black-owned businesses or business partners of mine. I, I, I encourage black-owned businesses, so I try to rep whatever you know I can get my hands on. Uh, and I would like one of those. We're not the same uh, shirts. Okay. You just tell us where to go. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I met, you know, because you know, I just feel like you know our our, our culture is really strong. We're really impactful, influential. Uh, with so many things uh, mentally that yeah. we got to change the narrative to tap in it more. Uh, yeah. Powerful, powerful, um, powerful culture. So we just want to let it flip. Looks like we're about um, out of time here. So yeah. I want to say we thank you for coming on and sharing insight on what you're doing. I definitely want to get with you on the books. You're talking to the right one. By the end of the year, I'm going to have my books out because you're going to help me. And nice. I'm all you to it. So let's get that yeah. going. Um yeah. Do you want to shoot a shout out? Going to tell them how to find you, any socials or anything like that before I wrap up? Yeah, I appreciate that. Thank, thanks for having me on, Anthony, man. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, so uh, ministrypivot.com. Um, you can catch me on uh, Instagram. Uh, Rev Russ is on, is on IG. Um, Pastor Russ on Facebook. But ministrypivot.com is where you go, all of the stuff there. And if you're looking for a church, big shout out, my church, Kingdom Fellowship, uh, AME Church, if you're in the Maryland area, if you worship online, uh, you can check us out too. Uh, Kingdom.global is the name of our church and, and my pastor again, uh, Pastor Matthew Watley is a dope dude, uh, man, and uh, super excited uh, for all that God is doing in this season for me, but excited what God is doing in season for you all as well uh, as you pivot toward it, man. Dope.
All right, thank you. Thank you, Rev Russ. And follow what this man is saying. Kingdom Fellowship is the truth. Pastor Wiley is the hey, he funny and he own it. So if you don't have a church, go out there and check them out. I think they're cool, man. This has been another great episode of Let Bob Podcast. You can always find us on all social media. At we are Let Bob. You can find me personally at I am Let Bob. Thanks, and we're out. It's just some that I live that this world don't live. It's just some that I feel that this world don't feel. 